providing ongoing support and educating users through his service, Fix Up Box. He helps organize both WordPress Orlando Meetup and WordCamp Orlando. Uh, so today, uh, his theme is a primer workshop. So let's welcome uh, David. <laughs> uh, also, he will take questions during his presentation. So uh, just raise your hand, I'll come to you with the mic. Uh, additionally, um, there are a few housekeeping things. Uh, I'll be available at the Happiness Bar uh, for a few hours afterward, probably until lunch. And um, I'm unfortunately a little sick, I'm a little congested, so thank you in advance if you want to like, shake my hand or anything, but um, I'll just let you know in advance. I'll just wave at everyone friendly. So I'm going that conversation sometimes. <laughs> um, but thank you for joining me. I think I already kind of covered, um, if you are uh, going to be on Wow, I'm the right side of the room. Um, the presentation stuff is showing up on that side, so as long as you can see it, you good? Okay. I'm going to leave this uh, on full screen, so I'm going to be jumping over to, uh, to code and to website. So before we started, I asked if anyone had experience building themes already. Um, you know, thankfully, not thankfully, uh, not very much, but that's why you're here. And you all have a little bit of knowledge about HTML and CSS, but not much uh, PHP or JavaScript knowledge. And that is actually the perfect place that, that I would want to start at. Uh, so building a WordPress theme, you're going to be spending a lot of time looking through, well, for me, I spend a lot of time looking at other people's code. And I spend a lot of time looking at the WordPress developer's guide. Uh, so on the link on the bottom slides, and it's going to be at the end of the presentation as well, that is a link to a GitHub repository. Uh, this is, shows the code that we're going to be working on. And uh, if you are not familiar with GitHub uh, or with Git, there's something called commits. It's basically whenever you make a change of code and you save it, you can separate them out into different little messages. So if you go to this page and uh, click the commit button, it will show all the different steps that I uh, did for this code. And if you start from the bottom and work your way up, it's going to step through the code changes we're making. So you can review this um, you know, on your own time. You can look at it now while working. And you also have a resource for later. Can additionally, you that link back up? Yeah, well, but I'll put it back up. And then additionally, on this page, besides the code, uh, there is a description below it with a lot of links to useful resources. Um, I use these resources almost every day. Like, you know, I, no one memorizes all of this stuff. Anyone does. Um, you know, there's so many things that you can be doing here that these resources are a great guide to tell you exactly how the code works, how it interacts, what it does. And the link is at the very bottom. And then again, I'm going to have the link up at the uh, end as well. All right. So. To build your own WordPress child theme, uh, you really only need one thing, a style.css file. If you've ever looked at your WordPress theme before, every WordPress theme has one. You just go to, show you what it looks like here. You go to your WordPress uh, install folder, wherever you have all your WordPress files. And then under WB content, you have a folder themes go to whatever your theme is called. In this case, I've been called WC NYC. And then you have your folder. Now, in my case, I have um, 
two things that are related to the git thing, but really the only file that's part of the same right now is a file called style.css. And your style.css file is going to start out with a block of comments. If you, you don't have to, um, for all the code here, again, you want to add that link, so you can just copy and paste, uh, you know, if you want to use it. Um, you're not going to have to write all of these things. Some of these things are optional. The ones that are required are a theme name, a, and then uh, the template. That's it. Now those other things are useful, and I'll show you what they do. Um, and in this case, note where I have a template, and I have it say 2017. That's because I'm making a child theme of the 2017 theme. Uh, I chose the most recent one that is included in WordPress for this. So I'm going to go look at the website that this is on, and I'm looking at the themes page. Um, and in this case, I have the 2017 theme. So I'm, you have to make sure you have whatever your parent theme is installed. Um, I'm going to, again, apologize, uh, ignore the name, since I have that style file already created. I have my theme here. I'm going to click on details just so you can see that I have the name of the theme, uh, my WordPress.org username, the version of the theme, uh, this links to my website, this is a description of it, and it's all the tags that I have. If you've ever looked at themes on the WordPress repository, you know, they all pretty much have the same stuff. This is exactly where they come from. All of that information on that page comes from this block of comments at the top of your style sheet. So, that's it. Activate. We have our child theme. Done. So, see everyone later. <laughs> um, and you know, see, it's going to look like I have a little bit of test content on here, but it just looks like a normal 2017 theme because we haven't actually done anything to change the theme yet, even though we are using our custom theme that we created. So now we're going to make some changes to it. All right. So the first thing we're going to do is include style changes. Basically, we're going to say we want to take all of the things that uh, this theme has, and we're going to add our own styles as well. So we're going to create a new file in our theme called functions.php. And in that file, first we are going to add an action. Walk in front of the screen and point that's all high up. Um, so I'm going to use a built in WordPress function called add action. Uh, this will be a little bit outside of the scope of the time we have here, but um, WordPress has things called hooks and filters built in. Basically, they are places in the WordPress repository where you can uh, insert your own code. So there is a WordPress hook called add action. I'm sorry, there's a WordPress hook called WP and Q Sprints. And when WordPress is running, it gets to that point of the code, and it looks for any other scripts that you told it to include. So I added a script that I'm calling uh, WC NYC WP and Q Sprints. And you'll note that the name right here is the same name as this PHP function. Um, so again, if you do not have familiarity with PHP, uh, that's, that's okay for other things that we're working on, because when you determine the uh, hooks that you want to use or the functions that you want to use, WordPress has a lot of them built in for you, and they have a wonderful place that will tell you exactly where to get to them. So for instance, uh, in the, I'm looking at the theme uh, developer handbook now. And it has information on what files you need, how to set them up, similar things to what I'm covering here. So I said, I want to add a new function called WC NYC WP and Q scripts. And I'm going to now use another function called WP and Q style. And I'm going to add in the 2017 style. That's the style for the theme that we're using as a parent theme. And then I'm going to add uh, the new style sheet for our child theme. And the first part, uh, the orange name here, you can call that whatever you want. That's the name that you're referencing for your style sheet. 
Uh, the important thing is the get stylesheet directory URI below. So you'll note that these two functions have different uh, things in them. One says get template directory, one says get stylesheet directory. The difference here is get template directory is going to refer to the location on your server where the parent theme lives. And then get stylesheet directory is going to refer to the location on your server where the child theme that you're currently in lives. Uh, or whatever theme you're currently in lives. So when I go to when this PHP is parsed by the server, it's going to return, you know, HTTPS, whatever your site is, slash the directory that your folder is in, and the end slash style.css. So you don't have to hard code it, you don't have to know what URL you're on, which means that you can make a change to that URL, like change your domain name, and it's still got to point to the right place. Function style. And then when we visit the theme in our browser, um, yeah, as I mentioned, right now it still just looks like the 2017 theme. So now we've done our setup work. We said here is our child themes folder, here's our child themes style sheet. Here's where all this stuff lives. Now let's start making some changes to it. So the first change I decided to make that would be very visible in this case uh, is let's remove that uh, the large cover image from this page. That's nice, but maybe it doesn't fit the way it So I've copied the header.php file from uh, the parent team, 2017, and I've copied it into my child theme folder. So if you look at it, um, I apologize, I think the sidebar might be a little bit small to read. Is this uh, text large enough? Um, so what I did was I took the exact file from the 2017 theme, and I copied it, and pasted it into my child theme. The reason I did that is when you're using a child theme, it's going to use all of the files that exist in your parent theme. Uh, so in this case, it's going to use this whole long, you know, hundred whatever files that live in the 2017 theme, unless I make, unless I make a file in my child theme with the exact same name. And then it's going to first choose my uh, my header.php file since I use the same name as the parent theme. So at this point, I haven't done anything to it. I just copied and pasted what they had, but now it's reading mine. And we're going to see that change when I remove that header image. So I'm going to go back. Actually, this is what the original file looks like. You pay attention to this part right here. And in this case, I just put little comment lines, because you can still see where the code is, as opposed to just deleting it. Um, so how did I figure out that that was that image? Honestly, to some extent, it's trial and error. Um, you know, when you're looking around, you're going to reach through the code and try to figure out where someone did something. There's a few different ways that you can do this to make it easier. Uh, so one nice thing is that a lot of WordPress functions have more, uh, more English readable names. So in this case, you know, has nav menu. This is a function to see does a navigation menu exist. Um, or get yeah, template part. It's just saying go grab a template file from our theme and use it. In this case, we wanted to grab the template uh, part for the header image. Um, so I wouldn't have known in advance that this is where this lives. I have to know because it's going to be different for the theme. It actually likes it. I went into the theme, looked for the thing I was looking for, and found it. Um, if it if another way that you might want to look for that is when you are looking at your website. Has anyone seen um, the debugger tools or the console on their browser before? Um, so if you have never seen this form, I'm going to right now, uh, this thing you hear, and you can move it around somewhere else if you want. If you're on a Windows computer, when you're in your browser, press F12. If you are on a Mac, press Command Option H. If you want 
two buttons. Uh, or you can uh, right click on the thing that you want to look at and then click inspect. And that works in uh, Chrome, Firefox, Safari. I'm sure probably the other browsers can use it. Uh, oh, uh, Internet Explorer. So uh, in this case, I looked for, I know I want this image, and you see when I'm hovering over the image, it even shows me what I'm hovering on on page, the big blue area. So I know that I'm looking for something within that WP custom header. And I look at my code, and I don't see that, so now I'm going to step up to see where that code is coming from. I see, okay, well now I'm in this header uh, area, which is still hovering blue. And in my theme folder, I see header. Now I know what error I'm supposed to be looking for. Uh, so I made that change. And try to change here. Okay. So now when I go to my website and I refresh the page, actually do it. Image is gone. Uh, that also happens to me a lot while working, by the way. You know, like, why is this not working? Oh, right, I didn't do it. If you ever get stuck while working on something, which I do all the time, every day, and I'll spend like an hour looking for something and realize I missed a comma somewhere. Um, the, the coding tries to be forgiving, and uh, if you do want to get started doing more of this coding, you're going to want to find some good code editor of some sort. There's a lot of them out there, a lot of them free, a lot of them paid. They do all sorts of different things. But one of the things that is really useful in pretty much any one of them is uh, color coding. And so if I have like an issue, for instance, it will show me that there's an error you know, on the page. Um, you know, specific ones I can ignore here, but like if I, you know, well, actually, uh, if I make a mistake somewhere, it'll like change color to one me and pop up some errors on the screen. So pretty much just wherever you want to edit your code, find one, which almost all of them do, that will uh, change the color based on what you're working on. And at the very least, you can scan it and make mistakes. What's the editor doing now? Uh, I'm using Sublime Text. Um, that one's a paid one, but there is uh, one called Atom, uh, A-T-O-M, uh, VS Code. Uh, if you're on Windows, there's one Notepad plus uh, all of them. Those other three that I named work on all computer types, but Notepad plus plus is a good easy one to on the Windows. Um, for paid ones, PHP Storm is very good. And there's quite a bunch. I'm sure any of you are already using some, and you have a different one. You know, they all do similar things. So I made my first change. We've removed that image. Now let's try something else. So now I decided I want to have a uh, widget area in the header. I want to have my own sidebar up at the top of the site where I can add some information to it. So I'm going to go back to my functions.php file, and I'm going to add that widget area in. I'm going to add that new sidebar. So first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to, again, use that WordPress function add action. But this time, I'm going to tell it to go into the area called widgets init. So again, when WordPress gets to the widgets init uh, part of running, it's going to look to see if I have any code I've added. And I've added this function called uh, WCNYC widgets init. And now I have my code for that function. Um, and again, this is all PHP up here right now. Uh, but I get to use another built-in WordPress function called register sidebar. And again, thankfully, everything is named in such a way that it's a little helpful in figuring out what it does. So, and guess this bit of code here registers a new sidebar, adds a new sidebar to your site. Uh, there's a few, there's a bit of information about what that sidebar does, and I'm gonna, I'll keep reminding you just so you don't think like I'm an amazing master or any of this stuff. I don't memorize all these things. 
all of this code is available in those handbooks, including all of these different, uh, all these different things that we're adding to it. But I'm going to give an ID. The ID is the thing we name that whatever we want, but just make sure it's a name that you're going to remember and want to reuse, because that's important for us. I'm going to give it a name. You may notice I also wrapped it in these, uh, there's two underscores that I wrapped it in quotes here, and I put CNYC at the end. Whenever you see something like that, that means that we've made string ready for translation. Uh, so basically, someone else could take this theme and translate it into a different language without having to go in and edit my files. They can go and make a new file that has uh, all the strings that they want to change. So if you ever see that in another theme that already exists or other plugins, that's what that's there for. Um, it's a good habit to get into just putting that in the event they're releasing something for other people to use. So I have the name of my theme, the description, and in this case I put, before I add a widget, I'm going to add this bit of HTML code, and then after I add a widget, I'm going to add this other HTML code here. Site, that looks good. I should have done that before I uh, added that code. Uh, but on our site, that looks like this. So I have my title, I have a widget area, the description, adds widgets here. I shorten it to fit on the slide. But. <laughs> and then I have uh, the ability to add something here. So in this case, I just added a tag cloud from the site. I'm going to go take a look at the site, and I don't see anything. That's because now we have to actually take that uh, sidebar and add that into our theme and tell it where we want to make it displayed. So you could go directly into our header.php file here, and we could just add a bit of code here to make it display. Uh, but I want to show you a different method that you might use in the event that you want to add a variety of different sidebars, or you want to keep your code cleaner, more condensed, uh, make it easier to work on. We're going to add a brand new file to our theme folder called sidebarheader.php. Now in this case, the name is important. So uh, there's a lot of different files in WordPress that you might see if you're looking at a theme that start page hyphen something, single hyphen something, things like that. Um, while you can point to these files however you want to, if you use the naming conventions that they give you, like in this case, sidebar hyphen header, that allows you to more easily use it in your theme. So I could call this file whatever I want, but by calling it a way that uh, is more friendly to how WordPress already makes themes, it's going to be able to do a lot of the work for me in finding that file. So I've created a new file called sidebarheader.php. And that exists in our theme folder with all the other files that we've created. And in there, you can see I'm doing a mix of PHP and HTML. And again, this is where I say if you have some HTML knowledge, um, that's enough to start building your own theme. Because you can use those wonderful guidebooks to figure out, OK, what do I do to make a sidebar display? And there's a function called dynamic sidebar. And I'm telling you which sidebar I want to use. Header widget area, which as a reminder, is the ID that we gave to our widget area. And then I'm doing a little check first to see if that is active, meaning is there a widget inside of there. Uh, the reason I'm doing that is I have some HTML wrapped up here. And so I want to say, if I don't have any widgets in there, don't even make that HTML at all. So I don't have like an empty box with nothing in it. Right, so we have our header widget area, a tag cloud our page, and there's our uh, tag cloud using the default 2017 styles. Now it doesn't look very pretty right now, because I haven't done anything to style it up yet, uh, but you see I have this area that I added to our uh, header file. Uh, I have this area that I added uh, to our header style, header file, and uh, it's going to show up, you know, in our header. And in this case, I put it below that menu, but above any page content. Uh, so I'll add a little bit of styling to it. Um, 
I'm going for a style that CSS style, which they were for. Hold up. So remember, we just had our comments. And now we can see we have a little bit of uh, styling here. Um, so again, this where some CSS will come in handy. Uh, but, you know, again, get started at whatever point uh, makes sense to you. In fact, I'm going to just pull some more on the page. So let's say I, I'm just going to make it, let's say I want to make this uh, word post here larger. If I hover over it, I click and click inspect. You can see I found it on the page here. Inside, uh, in the debugger console, it shows you all of the HTML that's on the site. You can't see the PHP because that's being done on the server and it gets sent to the site, so there's no PHP working here. And then you can see all of the uh, CSS that's being used on it. And you notice that there's a lot of them here. That's because there's a few different styles being applied here. And CSS, uh, the cascading style sheets, the idea of the cascading is it's going to start from something really specific and then work its way backwards. So for instance, I can say, every link on my site is going to be blue. And then I can say, every link that's in the footer is going to be red. And then I can say, every link that's in the footer that somebody has already clicked on is going to be purple. And so I can have different levels and it's going to look, okay, is this a link? Yep. Is this in the footer? No. So I'm going to make it blue. Yep. Then I'm going to make it uh, red. You know, and it gets more and more specific from that. So when you look at the uh, styles on the in the console here, um, one, the one that's darkest, is the one that's actually being used. And then it's going from the one that describes this most specifically to least specifically. So I have so many because it can fit into so many categories. Uh, so in this case, I'm just saying, I want to make this uh, foreign post here much larger. Um, when you're working, if you want to test this out in your browser, if you start typing, they'll actually give you, you know, suggestions for what you're doing. So I want to do something with the font, and I see font size, perfect. And I can use one of these different settings. If I scroll through, you can see, you know, changes being made to it based on what I've selected. Uh, you can also put an exact value, 40 pixels. Um, two, yes. Yeah. And these are all things that you can, again, slowly progress into on how complicated you want to get. Now, when I make a change here, just to clarify, in the uh, console, if I refresh my page, they're going to be gone, and no one else is going to see them. But it's a good way for you to see what it's going to look like on the page before you take whatever you typed here and copy into your style sheet file. Uh, so I made a few different styling changes to the header, and then uh, refreshed. It doesn't really look that different right now. We're about to move that menu. Yeah. All right. So now I decided I'm going to add a second menu to the site. Oh, sorry, did you get a question? Um, uh, so I decided I'm going to add a second menu to the site. Uh, below the header here, I'm just going to add a you know, secondary with some other links. And it's going to go above those uh, tags. Um, maybe you've seen some sites that have like a little menu at the top that have social icons at the top and they have an actual you know home about page or whatever menu. Uh, so you might make do that with your theme. Or maybe you want to add a menu to the footer um, or something else. But in this case I'm adding one to the header. So the first thing I'm going to do is once again go to my functions file. Once again I'm going to add an action. I'm going to say I'm adding new code to WordPress here. And I'm using a hook called after setup theme. Uh, basically, when the theme is done loading. And the reason I'm choosing that one is I want to make sure that all of the HTML is already loaded on the page. Um, sorry if I come off as a broken record. I'm going to keep repeating. You do not need to know all of these things in advance. Like I would not have just thought of this randomly in my head. The guidebook has a lot of stuff to help you. <laughs> And it helps me every time I'm writing this. So um, I'm adding my own function. And then just a reminder that this bit right here is the name of my function. And I'm using another built-in WordPress function called register nav menu. Which, oh, yeah? I'm sorry, sir. Did you tell me the guidebook of the session about Yes. Uh, so um, the link is going to be up at the end of my presentation as well. It was at the beginning. Uh, but it's to the, um, it's, gonna, it's a link to all the code for this uh, 
session. And I also have a lot of um, links to resources. In this case, it's a very first link here to the handbook. Um, that's in, something that, you know, does that does anyone from the box here? Anyone today from the box? Anyway, a lot of volunteers for these events actually wrote all of this documentation with all these things that are on these pages. Oh, we do have some of to work on some docs, but not many docs today. Okay. But um, these, are, these are great resources that a lot of volunteers put a lot of time and effort to make look amazing. Uh, also, if you are logged in, um, they recommend changes so if you see something that's incorrect. So please, by all means, do that. If you see something that's incorrect in any of these, that's how we make them better. So, uh, so I've used the WordPress function register nav menu. I'm creating my own menu then on header secondary. Um, and then I just gave it a title, secondary header menu. So this time I'm going to go look here before I add it. So when I go to the menus page in WordPress, um, you can see that this theme already has a top menu built in and a social links menu. Those are built into 2017 theme. So now I'm going to add my new menu. What I'm doing on the other screen is I'm just making it quicker to add the code, so I'm not copying and pasting it all in. Um, so I have in my functions file. I have, that, you know, I have that header secondary set up here. So now if I go back to this page and refresh, you'll see at the bottom here. And now I have my new menu called the secondary header menu. So I can take, I'm just going to take the same menu that I have here. Add that to that secondary header menu. Refresh. And you can see that doesn't really look that great. Okay. So now I want to. Oh, sorry. I apologize. I skipped the showing you step. Um, now I need to go into my header file and then uh, before before I refresh the page, now I need to go into my header file and actually tell it where to find that menu. Uh, so I decided I wanted it to be uh, right at the very end of the existing navigation. So I can see this is the top navigation. This is the menu that part is there. And I decided I'm going to add my new menu below it. Uh, so first I'm saying, if has nav menu, similar to the sidebar, I'm saying, is there a menu located here? And to clarify by that, I mean, does somebody have a menu with that checked? If that's the case, then do this. Those key nav menu. <coughs> WordPress function function that will pull that menu and display on the page. And really the only important thing to note here is that the theme location, the secondary, is the same thing that we registered here. So he said pull the one that we registered. And then I have it displaying above that set header sidebar that we created, uh, but below the existing menu. And I refresh, it looks like this. Again, it doesn't look great because we haven't done anything to style it yet. And more important, the existing menu uh, is sticky, you know, stuck to the top of the page, so we can't see it hiding behind that. So in this case, when I will style, um, I'm telling you the top, in this case, I'm just telling the stop menu to not be sticky. Make that change. Refresh. And there we go. Again, we can make this look fancier and make it look however we want, but in this case, I'm just adding a little bit to say, you know, now that's not sticky, it's going to scroll with the page. But now we can see that top menu that already existed. You can say I should probably make a change to the fixed drop down menus, uh, our secondary menu, and then the header area. I'm just going to go back and add something else just to show you what you had more things to that header area will also show. So um, you also may notice that, again, like I already found a problem with my theme when I was creating it. I'm hovering over a drop-down menu, and it's hiding behind there. Uh, this is something that you're also going to do a lot in your main theme, so you're going to make your changes. You're going to see something that doesn't work, and then you're going to start adding fixes to those things. Um, in this case, we are skipping over that particular thing. So just, um, <laughs> so, 
Um, so now we're going to try adding something to the customizer. Does anyone uh, clear have notes of customizer? Okay. Um, uh, if you have not seen the customizer before, there's two ways that you can get to it. While you are logged in and at the uh, looking at your site, you have that black admin bar. Whatever page you're on, you can click customize. And while you are logged in and on the back end of your site, uh, if you hover over appearance, you can click customize from there. So the customizer is built into WordPress, and uh, it already has a few things by default on it, but your own theme or plugin can add things to this customizer. The reason you might want to add things here is if it's something, a setting that you expect to change often, or you are releasing this for someone else and expect them to change something. So as an example, I may put a color palette here uh, for you know links and headers and things like that if I'm sending something to one of my clients. That way I can say, here, if you want to see what it looks like with all of the links red instead of blue, you can just go over here. In this case, I'll just click on one. Um, Click, and then you can just scroll this around and probably have a page that actually has a header. Oh. Oh, well, ignore that. Can't see it on this page because I don't have the actual header shown up. We can change um, the color because I haven't deleted it at the beginning of our presentation. <laughs> uh, you can change the color of the header and see what it looks like. Um, or if you want to change color scheme of the theme. So, you can quickly see changes here uh, to your theme. And then if you click publish, that's basically saving those changes. If you don't click that, you just close it. You know, it's going to warn me, hey, you made changes. Sure. It'll get rid of those changes. Either. So we're going to add our own setting to the customizer. To the home page. Um, I decided that Right now, the home page is showing a bunch of blog posts, and it's showing the entire post. So I decided I wanted to have the option of only showing the uh, excerpt of the post on those pages. And before I move that, is everyone, do I have any questions or anything? I know more people came in, so I'll tell you when you have a question, please raise your hand. Uh, we're going to add our own thing to the customizer. In this case, the, the customizer, to be able to do that live refresh, now you're talking about a bit of PHP and a bit of JavaScript code. Uh, but again, thankfully, there's a lot of great resources that exist in that theme handbook that show you how to add your things to the customizer. And so, repetitively, <laughs> so I'll nail it in, I am adding a new action to register something to the customizer. I'm giving it the name of the function I'm creating. WC, NYC Customize Register. And then I am telling it that I want to add a new section to the customizer. In this case, a section is one of these uh, blocks here, so I have any colors and the media. So I'm going to add a new section called Archives. So I'm thinking of any you know, category page, blog, scroll page, uh, archive pages. I'm going to add a setting that I'm going to call show excerpts in archives. And I'm adding some settings to that setting. It is a theme modification. And I want it to refresh the page when I add that setting. And now I'm adding a control. And a control is any sort of input a checkbox, a radio button, text input. Uh, you don't have to code these up yourself, because the WordPress customizer has things built in to say, I want to show a checkbox, type of checkbox down here. The checkbox is going to relate to this setting, show excerpts and archives. It's going to exist in this section, section archives. And the label for that checkbox is going to be only show excerpts on archive pages. Pull over here, you see we don't have archives yet. And now we have a new block here called Archives. I'm going to click on it. 
checkbox that says only show excerpts on our comment pages. Can anyone guess what happens when I click that button? Anything else? Well, it just has like a little excerpt and a picture of the um, picture of the dog. Eventually. Oh, okay. But right now, when I click it, it's going to refresh. So it's not a refresh page, but it does nothing. Okay. Because I created that checkbox, but I didn't tell it to actually do anything yet. <laughs> so I <have> a trick. <laughs> trick question. So now we're going to use that customizer setting that we created. Uh, so in this case, and I'm going to um, do similar to what I did to the header, I'm going to copy the content.php file from, uh, from the 2017 theme, because I know that that's what I'm changing. I you know, went through, figured out, okay, this is the page that I want to make a change to. And then I updated that. Um, I updated it to make a change. So here's the original section of the file that we have. Um, to clear, here's the whole file. There's a lot of stuff in it. So I just cut out the part that we're looking at right now. I went into the uh, entry content area of that where all of the text for the uh, post goes. And normally it says the content, which is a WordPress function that just pulls all of the content for that page or post from the database. And I said, if we are on, so here's um, a conditional statement from PHP Arrow, just see, does this, is this true or not? And I said, if we are on an archive page, in WordPress that's a tag page, a date page, like all posts from January, um, category page, just archives, like all posts from 2017, something like that. There's a lot of uh, different types of archive pages. So if we are on an archive page, or if we are on the home page, since I have uh, my posts showing up on the home page. So if one of those two things is true, and if get theme mod, show excerpts in archives, Reminder is what we call our uh, setting here. So if we are on one of those pages and we have that theme modification in place, then we are only going to show the excerpt of the theme. Otherwise, we're going to show the original bit of code. So this right here is the original code that already existed. Does that make sense? Now we're going to actually apply that change. Yeah, okay. So I'm going to refresh here. I'm going to scroll down a bit so you can see these posts. And now look at archives. If I click only show those excerpts, it's going to refresh. And I see it takes a lot of space because it's only showing you know, the first uh, 50 character, no, 20 words of the post. I uncheck it, it's going to refresh, and show everything again. Keep that. I publish. Close. Now that will actually be live on the site. So that's a setting that I created so that if I decide later, never mind, I don't want this anymore, I can quickly go in and just uncheck that and have it go back to the way that I want, you know, without having to make any code changes. Um, or if you're creating something for someone else, then you can say, oh, just go uncheck that. And there's a lot of things that you can do with the customizer, and there's a lot of things built into it. So as an example, uh, that those color settings here, like this, or the color sliders, those things are built in. So as long as you know the correct thing to call to get those, which, surprise, instead of saying the word checkbox, you can say color picker. It does all the work of coding that up for you and making the sliders and making it look nice and saving the correct things. It does a lot of uh, heavy lifting for you. So you can focus on the thing important for you, which is making sure that uh, what you want does what they want to do. Okay. And is uh, anyone here heard of Gutenberg, right? Has anyone here not heard of Gutenberg? Okay, actually, I'm, I'm, I'm very happy that it's only a few hands. That's, that's, that's quite all right. We have, but uh, uh, Gutenberg is the new editor coming to WordPress uh, in version 5.0. Uh, 
that's going to be coming here probably in the next few months. So it's going to be a change to how people edit content in WordPress. So I decided to add a little bit to show you how you might make changes for Gutenberg on your page. Before I do that, I'm going to show you what it looks like. So normally, uh, you know, this is what this is what the WordPress editor only looks like on that. You have this area here where you can add content, your title, things like that. The Gutenberg editor looks like this. It's uh, you're adding new content instead of typing the content in as separate information here. You're creating something called blocks. It's so like this whole paragraph is what you would call a block in Gutenberg. And you can make a lot of styling changes directly in this block. So I'm changing the text size. Or you notice that I have this nice drop cap character here. I can turn that off if I don't want it. Um, I can change the color of this background and text color all at once. And even nicer, it warns me, hey, this is not a great color combination. <laughs> <laughs> to, uh, you know, like, so it's not, this is not a great color combination for anybody. Let's be but, also, it has very low contrast. So Gutenberg is going to warn you in advance, hey, if, you, if someone might have difficulty with their contrast, or if you're on a device that doesn't have great contrast, uh, this might not be a good way to do it. So if I switch back to the white background, that warning goes away, because the orange text and white isn't great, but at least it's high contrast. Yeah? Oh, yeah. Thank you, Jimmy. Um, if you're not, if you want to play with this a little bit, but you're not ready to put it on your own site, um, you can go to this URL right here, wordpress.org/gutenberg, and you can kind of play with it a little bit and get a feel for it. It doesn't give you all of those document settings um, that you, that David just showed us on the right hand side, but it will give you an idea of editing inside those blocks and how you can move the blocks around. Is, uh, okay, is test Gutenberg supported? Because I, I always tell people to go to testgutenberg.com. Oh, uh, yeah, it is. Um, Which has they're, this. Both, they're both pretty up to date, but that does have the right hand side on it. Yeah. Are we going to be forced to do this, or can we keep the regular? Oh, I can. You can, <laughs> yeah, you can keep the regular. Um, and we can have it, um, we can have an entire discussion on Gutenberg, but you can keep the regular. There is a plugin called Classic Editor where if you install that right now, it's going to do nothing. But when you when you have Gutenberg installed on your site, it's going to have the classic editor be your default editor. Also, uh, you may notice that on my site, I do have the Gutenberg plugin installed to show you how it works. Sorry? Yeah, yeah, so right now Gutenberg is a plugin, but the thing is in WordPress 5.0, it is going to be part of WordPress itself, so you don't have to download it as a plugin. So normally this just says add new next to post. Right. But now that Gutenberg is installed, there's a drop down and you can say either add a new post to Gutenberg or classic editor. Ah, yeah. And also when you are uh, hovering over a post to edit it, you can choose edit or classic editor. Okay, good. But with Gutenberg installed, it becomes the default. So if you just click edit, it's going to assume you want Gutenberg. And so unless you just a side note, when we do roll it out, sorry, I'm Joe Sepha. For anyone who doesn't know, I, I do a lot of WordPress project kind of operations stuff. Um, but when we do roll this out, and both of the future release leads are at this WordCamp, um, but we intend to have kind of a long rollout so that it's easy to get back to the classic editor, even if you have the default with Gutenberg editor in it. We don't intend to just force everyone into Gutenberg without any options back as we're getting used to it. Because it's a really radically different way to manage your content, and we realize that that is a scary prospect. And so we're planning on a long rollout for y'all. That said, um, <laughs> Thank you. I totally agree. It is a big change, and it's certainly it's definitely going to be a bigger change for existing sites. Where I'm coming from on this, because I hear a lot of opinions about Gutenberg, yeah. Uh, I really like it. I've been using it for my own personal sites for uh, the past few months to you know, do tests and see about any issues to come up to help fix it, which is uh, 
which is one reason why you may have seen a call out on your own site in the back end that says, you know, try Gutenberg. If you want to get more, you're going to try it and see you know, what they get you. Um, and the more that you try it, the better we can make it. Yeah. So. But no, I really like it. I've, uh, I know I'm not supposed to, but I already used it for like a client site to bring your build. You're totally allowed to. It's yeah. Awesome. <laughs> it's great. Yeah, no, it's great. Um, so, so if you have an existing site with a lot of content, yeah, it, you're going to do a bit of work if you want to switch to it. But if you're starting a new site, I mean, you should have tried it's great. Also, converting to blocks from blasted posts is so easy, easy, actually. Easy. Yeah, I want to, hold on, I want to show. Sorry, I know, I know we're a little... Uh, Sorry, I just got really excited. About <laughs> yeah. David's going to pull this up for you, Can but... I ask another question? Yeah. Oh, yeah. So, wait, wait. Oh, I own the community music. I own the community newspaper in Times Square, so I get a lot of press releases in block format. Do I have to like set it into different blocks? Uh, well, so yes and no, but you don't. Um, you don't you have to. Have to yeah, you don't manually have to do that. Oh, okay. Because um, I'm like, oh my god, that would be like a ton of work. Yeah. So, um, so this is one way that you do it, but also I'll show you another. But let me. Sorry, I'm going to show you this real quick. Yeah, I'll show you my very last bit of code stuff, and then if we have a, okay, I think we'll, yeah, yeah, well, I will also get that happening. Okay, okay. Um, so when you look at a post that was already written in WordPress, this is one that has a lot of just random HTML. You'll see it's in what's called a classic block. Uh, I can say that I want to convert two blocks. So what I did was I clicked on it, clicked on the little options thing, convert two blocks, and. It was a very large block, so it took more than a millisecond. But suddenly, it's in separate blocks now. And you see that it kept all the styling. This is still a block quote. I can do lots of cool things with it. I can even change it in that quote. But that's all Bloomberg thing. I'm not going to show you all that. Uh, I can show you that if you want to be with that. And the two releases are here. Uh, so the very last thing I want to do is show you how would you use Bloomberg in your existing theme. So one, all themes are Bloomberg ready. So if you already have a theme on your site, it is already Gutenberg ready. All themes are not already Gutenberg compatible. Did I mix that up? Yeah, say, say it again, sorry. I was All themes are Gutenberg ready, not Gutenberg compatible. I'm something like blanking. Oh, yeah. <laughs> um, so, most uh, themes are, are Gutenberg ready, it's been built so that it works. Ready, well. that's what I mean. Okay, I just wanted to put ready. Yeah, so, so if your theme is already going to work with Gutenberg. However, if it's not Gutenberg compatible, it's not going to have all the extra cool features that you can get with Gutenberg. So I'm going to show you two examples of ways that we can make it Gutenberg compatible. And I'm going to show you them in about 30 seconds. So the first thing I'm going to do is blah, 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 all that stuff, adding things. I am adding an editor color palette, uh, magenta, green, to the. So I'm going to add that code. And when I'm editing a post, there's a little click here. Uh, So then I have color settings here, and there's a default color palette. We'll refresh, we we'll this page. So I'm going to start on the blocks. And when I click here and look at those color settings again, suddenly only the colors that I added show up here. So if I have a client site, as I've already done with my client sites, I take like their logo or their color palette that we've created for their design, and I add it here, so by default, they can just choose the colors that they are already using on their site. You can still add any other color you want, but I've made it easier for them. Additionally, I added uh, theme support for wide and full screen images. No, nope, sorry, just for wide images. Full screen's already there. And you see how easy that is. I say add theme support, align wide. In this case, I say also they want to add the block style and the default styles from the paper. That way, I can have cool posts that look like Look like a Google post. Uh, yeah, thank you so much. Sorry for the Thank you so much. Um, and if you have any questions, we'll be helpful. So again, I will be at the happiness bar all the time.